The Ideal Diesel Cycle In the linked video, we have already explained the differences between a gasoline and a diesel engine in detail. We also took a closer look at the ideal auto cycle of a gasoline engine in the linked video. In this video we will take a closer look at the ideal diesel cycle of a diesel engine. In the pressure volume diagram, the thermodynamic processes in the cylinder of a diesel engine are qualitatively similar to those in a gasoline engine. First, in naturally aspirated engines, the intake process takes place through the suction effect at low negative pressure. This is followed by compression with the valves closed, causing the pressure to rise significantly. Just before reaching top dead center, the injector begins to inject the diesel fuel, which spontaneously ignites due to the high temperature. The powerful explosion causes the piston to move downward, transferring work to the crankshaft via the connecting rod. Just before bottom dead center is reached, the exhaust valve opens and the burnt gases are expelled from the cylinder at a slight overpressure. To describe the thermodynamic processes of the diesel engine mathematically, the changes of state are studied under idealized conditions, as in the auto cycle for a gasoline engine. This is called the ideal diesel cycle. In such a cycle, the charge exchange loop is neglected, which means that the intake and exhaust strokes occur without any work being done. After the intake, isentropic compression takes place due to the process speed, in which the heat transfer through the cylinder walls is neglected. This is followed by combustion of the highly compressed diesel fuel. Compared to the auto cycle, however, there is no significant increase in pressure. Instead, the piston moves downwards during combustion, so that the expansion of the gases compensates for the pressure increase that would otherwise occur. In an idealized view, the volume increases during combustion of diesel fuel in such a way that the pressure remains nearly constant. This is called constant pressure combustion. Unlike a gasoline engine, the combustion process is described as isobaric rather than isochoric. The expansion process after combustion is again assumed to be isentropic due to the high process speed, as there is no significant heat transfer through the cylinder wall. The cooling of the gases due to the exhaust of the burnt charge and the intake of the fresh charge is assumed to be an isochoric process, as in the ideal auto cycle. The energetic analysis of the diesel cycle is ultimately identical to that of the auto cycle. In this case, the expansion work again corresponds to the area under the expansion curve. However, it should be noted that in the ideal diesel cycle, the expansion takes already place during the isobaric combustion. Therefore, the expansion work must be determined for both the isobaric and adiabatic components. The work required to compress the intake air is determined as the area under the compression curve. Again, the difference between the expansion and compression work is the useful work effectively done by the crankshaft. In the diagram, this is shown as the enclosed area within the cycle. However, this useful work can also be determined much more easily by the difference between the heat supplied and the heat rejected. Note that in the diesel cycle the heat input is isobaric, unlike the gasoline cycle where the heat input is isochoric. The thermal efficiency as the ratio of useful work to supplied heat energy in turn describes the efficiency with which the heat energy is converted during the combustion process into useful work. Let us now look at an example of calculating the power and fuel consumption of a diesel engine. We have already covered a similar example in the video on the ideal auto cycle. Therefore, in this video we will not go into all the details, but focus on the main points. As an example, we consider a four-cylinder four-stroke diesel engine with a maximum cylinder capacity of 0.5 liters. The air-fuel mixture is drawn in at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 1 bar and compressed at a compression ratio of 20. For simplicity, the diesel air mixture is considered as pure air with an isochoric specific heat capacity CV of 718 joules per kilogram per Kelvin and an isobaric specific heat capacity CP of 1005 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Using the ideal gas law, we can determine the mass of gas in the cylinder, which is 0.6 grams. In the following, we assume that the temperature rises to a maximum of 2000 degrees Celsius during combustion at state 3. The temperatures and pressures of the other states are given directly in the diagram and will not be calculated here. However, these values can be determined using the equations for the isentropic and isobaric processes. For practice, it is recommended that you calculate the temperatures and pressures in the various states yourself. First, the heat input during isobaric combustion is calculated using the given formula. Only the gas mass M, the specific heat capacity Cp, and the temperature change during combustion from state 2 to state 3 are relevant. In our case, 
this temperature increase is 1,303 Kelvin. This results in a total heat input from the combustion of 786 joules. In the same way, the heat rejected during isochoric cooling from state 4 to state 1 can be determined from a temperature change of minus 672 Kelvin. Because of the isochoric process, the specific heat capacity CV must be used. In this case, the resulting heat energy is minus 289 joules. The negative sign simply indicates that heat has been removed from the gas due to the temperature decrease. As explained earlier, the difference between the heat supplied and the heat removed is the useful work. This results in a useful work of 497 joules that the engine cylinder delivers to the crankshaft during one thermodynamic cycle. The useful work can also be determined from the expansion and compression work. The work in an isentropic process is determined from the gas mass M, the specific heat capacity CV, and the temperature change. With a temperature increase of 677 Kelvin during compression, the compression work is 292 joules. The work of expansion must now be determined. As explained earlier, this consists of both an isobaric and an isentropic component, since the gas already expands during isobaric combustion. For the isobaric process, the given formula for the work done by the gas applies. In addition to the constant pressure of 66.2 bar during combustion, the volume change that occurs is relevant. In this case, the volume change is 0.034 liters. This results in an expansion work of minus 225 joules released during combustion. It is important to note that the corresponding base units must always be used in the formulas, which is volume in cubic meters and pressure in pascals. Now the isentropic component of the expansion must be determined. This is calculated analogously to the isentropic compression, using the temperature change from state 3 to state 4. With a temperature decrease of minus 1,308 Kelvin, we obtain an expansion work of minus 564 joules. The negative sign here simply indicates that the gas has done work during the expansion. The total expansion work is finally obtained by summing the isobaric and isentropic components. It is minus 789 joules. As explained earlier, the difference between the expansion and compression work is the useful work. In this way, we obtain the same useful work as the difference in heat energy of 497 joules. In this case, the thermal efficiency as the ratio of useful work to supplied heat energy is 63%. The engine power is now determined from the useful work given the engine speed. We assume an engine speed of 2,400 revolutions per minute. First, we calculate the time required to complete a thermodynamic cycle during which the useful work is released. From the quotient of the useful work and the time, we can then determine the corresponding power. At an engine speed of 2,400 rpm, the crankshaft makes 40 revolutions per second. The reciprocal of this frequency is the period, which is the time it takes to complete one revolution of the crankshaft. It is 25 milliseconds. Since the crankshaft rotates twice during the four-stroke cycle of a four-stroke engine, the time to complete a thermodynamic cycle is 50 milliseconds. On average, the useful work of 497 joules is delivered in 50 milliseconds. Dividing the work by time gives a power output of about 10 kilowatts. Since the pressure volume diagram and the calculated values refer to a single cylinder, we must multiply this result by the number of cylinders to calculate the total engine power. In our case, the four-cylinder engine has a total power of 40 kilowatts. Now we determine the fuel consumption per hour using the previously calculated heat input of 786 joules per thermodynamic cycle. At an engine speed of 2,400 rpm, the cycle is completed 1,200 times in one minute. Over the course of an hour, this results in 72,000 completed cycles. Therefore, in one hour, we must deliver 786 joules of heat energy 72,000 times. This results in a total heat input of approximately 56.6 megajoules per hour. Fuel consumption is ultimately determined by the heating value of diesel fuel which is approximately 42 megajoules per kilogram. Solving the formula for the mass and using the total heat energy required of 56.6 megajoules and the heating value of 42 megajoules per kilogram, we obtain a mass of 1.35 kilograms of diesel that the engine must burn per hour. We now convert this result to liters using the density of diesel fuel, which is approximately 0.83 kilograms per liter. This results in a fuel consumption of around 1.63 liters per hour. 
This value is based on only one cylinder. With a total of four cylinders, the total fuel consumption is four times this amount, resulting in a total of 6.52 liters per hour. It should be noted that the diagram shown here is only a schematic representation. In a true-to-scale diagram, the isentropic processes are much steeper with decreasing volume. The pressure volume diagram shown here represents a scaled ideal diesel cycle. Finally, a note on the combustion process in both the gasoline and diesel cycle. The pressure volume diagram shows not only the ideal diesel cycle, but also the ideal auto cycle for a gasoline engine. Both the assumption of constant volume combustion in the gasoline engine and the assumption of constant pressure combustion in the diesel engine are, of course, highly idealized. In practice, neither of these extremes will occur. Rather, the combustion processes in both gasoline and diesel engines show characteristics of both isobaric and isochoric combustion. In a more refined analysis, combustion consists of both an isochoric and an isobaric component. This is referred to as a dual combustion cycle. The difference between describing a gasoline engine and describing a diesel engine is how pronounced the combustion components are. While the gasoline engine has a more pronounced isochoric combustion component, the diesel engine has a more pronounced isobaric component. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Thanks for watching.